Welcome to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Um, let me start with giving a few instructions. The first you didn't come to meet anybody or see anybody here. You came to have a deep walk and encounter with God. God is spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. He is called a spirit. Holy Spirit. And you can't walk with Him in your senses. One of the things you will do for yourself this morning is to connect with what God wants to do from this morning down to 31st night. And if I were you, I would change my itineraries. I would change gear. I would not do things as usual. Anytime God wants to move people, the devil shows up. And uh, it shows up with things like distraction. It shows up with things like insensitivity. He shows up with things like canality. He shows up with things like excuses. The devil is not after any other thing. He's just looking for one revelation that will break you through to steal. There's nothing that he's looking for. One thing he knows when it happens in your life, you would outdraw him. Just one thing. When he lays his hand off on it, he takes it. He destroys you. One of the biggest reasons why the devil tried to keep believers apart from fellowship is so he can find opportunity to destroy them. taking a five days journey and there is a central theme I'm going to be discussing in these five days they are knit together one session you miss will not there's no one session you miss there's no one session you miss that will be so small To allow for the rest you attended to cover up. Not one. I say not one. It's just like anybody who is missing this morning session. Now, if he likes, let him come from Monday till Thursday night session. He can't catch up. Because what is happening now is God is the one moving in the midst of the people now. God is the one preaching in these five days. Is not man. God is the one in charge of the service. God is the one in charge of the program. God is the one in charge of the itineraries. The move is God's move. It's not my move. And there are going to be raining down of mantles. Mantles that you have never been used to. And if I were you, take this other instruction, I would empty self. I would empty whatever that doesn't allow for God's quick move. I will empty it. You could switch off your phone for the next five days to mean business with God. To mean business with God. I will shut down senses if I were you. I'll do everything within my past to make sure not one thing, not one thing, 
not one thing stops the move of God in my life this season. Because the biggest miracle of a Christian, the biggest miracle that can happen for a Christian or to a Christian is the miracle of being able to know how to be led by the Spirit. Is being able to understand times and seasons. Is being able to understand what God is doing in the now. That's the biggest miracle that can happen to a man. It's nothing else. The biggest miracle that can happen to you is being able to understand God's move. Being able to understand times. Being able to understand God's program for your life and when that program is meant for. People miss out on breakthrough. People miss out on miracles. People miss out on opportunities only for one reason. And that reason, lack of understanding of times and seasons. People have carryovers in their lives, their destiny breakthroughs and all that not because the devil is too powerful but because they have no insight on times and season and in these five days we are going to be dealing on a personality we're just going to be dealing on the personality for the five days. Many of you know him by name, but many of you don't know him by contact. And the personality we're going to be focusing on this season is the one person that determines everything that happens in life. He is the most important person in the Trinity. He is like the wife of the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son are jealous of him. They can't play with him. He is the biggest gift God has ever given humanity. Not car, not house. Not talent, not skills, not education. He is the biggest gift. When God gave us, He gave us everything. When God gave us the Holy Ghost, He gave us Himself. He gave us His presence. He gave us His person. And we're going to be undertaking a journey into understanding all the carryovers you're having in life. It's tied to the fact that you have not understood the most all-powerful, important personality God gave you. It is called the person of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to try as much as I can in these five days to show you everything about him. Pentecost wouldn't have been possible without him. Christianity couldn't have been without him. Jesus would not have been able to fulfill assignment on earth. The 
the one who helped Jesus carry out the assignment God had for his life was the Holy Spirit. The one who helped Peter, who helped the apostles to do exploits in their time, season, was the Holy Spirit. I want to say this if you lose car, if you lose money, if you lost house, you have lost nothing. If you lose the Holy Ghost, you have lost God, you have lost everything. The quickest way to a life of struggle is a life without the Holy Spirit. The shortcut to a life of blindness is a life without. Let me show you something that God was the first man in the world who had a crisis. If you tell me I have a problem, you're not the first. God was the first man on the planet Earth to have a problem. Somebody just woke up one morning and discovered the world he was living in was formless, was void, and darkness covered the whole face of the deep. That was a big problem. Water filled the whole place. God had flood. Can you imagine? How do you want that this whole earth was flooded by water? How do you explain that? He was in a state of confusion, utter crisis. But there's one element I found that was instrumental to the creation of the whole world. There was one element, or there's one element I discovered that God put in motion to bring everything you and I can see, touch, into existence. The Bible said, and the Spirit of God hovered on the surface of the waters. And God said, let there be. So, the vital force that created everything God said was the Holy Spirit. God saw a world full of confusion and crisis. And for Him to create a desired life and future, He had to put the Holy Spirit into motion. The Holy Ghost is actually the one in charge of the Executive Council of Heaven. There's no project and program God has ever had in mind that was achieved without the Holy Ghost. No. When Jesus was done with his assignment on earth and was ascending back to the Father, he told the disciples, I am going back to my Father. He said, but there cometh another just like me. The Greek word for that is alos palakretos. That word is another of the same kind, of the same origin. We are of the same class. We belong to the same fraternity called the Trinity. Another of the same kind. I go back to the Father, but they call me someone else. When I was here, I was with you. This one who is coming is going to be in you. Because, you see, <laughs> Jesus understood the vital, important role the Holy Ghost had to play in this job, in Christianity, the Great Commission. He knew this was the same man who helped him execute his assignment. Do you know that the man who helped Jesus to ascend into heaven was the Holy Ghost? The one who helped Jesus resurrected from the dead was the Holy Ghost. 
Without him, resurrection couldn't have been possible. And let me also let you know something. Rapture is not possible without him. If you kill the Holy Ghost now, that is if you can, every one of us will remain here. When rapture, the trumpet sounds, the one who is going to cut us up from this realm is the Holy Spirit. The one who is going to go to the graves where the saints who died in Christ are buried and shake the grave and introduce life in them and they would rise from the dead is the Holy Spirit. Can you see how important that personality is? And let me tell you that a lot of Christians are having struggles because they are doing without Him. Having issues, having setbacks. Because they are doing without him. Do you know the Bible said that every sin committed by man can be forgiven except the sin against the Holy Ghost? Look at how important he is. The Holy Ghost is an awesome personality. Any life without him is a life of perpetual crisis. Is the best gift God ever gave man. All workings of the Spirit, all the manifestations of the Spirit, all ministry offices are offices equipped by the Holy Ghost. You can't function as an apostle You can't function as a prophet You can't function as a pastor You can't function as, a, as, as an evangelist You can't function as a teacher Without the help of the Holy Spirit You can't function in the giftings You can't manifest the giftings of the Holy Ghost Until you have the person of the Holy Ghost All spiritual gifts are gifts of the Holy Spirit All of them. All of them. All of them. All of them. Not one. All of them. All of them. Who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is a person. <laughs> you know. We, sometimes we worship what we do not know And it's not what You worship That changes you It is a revelation you have About what you worship That changes you Revelation is stronger than information So a lot of you are informed I, You know the Holy Ghost You perhaps um, Yes you know him by information. I ask you, how many of you know the Holy Spirit? You put up your hand, information. There is another dimension of knowing him by revelation. That's where the Bible said, as many who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, led by the Spirit. Hear me and hear me well. I want to say it again. Exploit is not possible without the Holy Ghost. You can't have unprecedented success without Him. If you ignore Him in your life, you ignore success. Ignore breakthrough. You say bye-bye to manifestation. You have just bid farewell. Exploits. Holy Ghost is a person. He has a feeling. 
He has emotion. He can be hot. He can cry. He is not an abstract object like most of you think. A wind, whatever. Sometimes when you feel breeze blow, you think it's the Holy Ghost. There are different manifestations of the Holy Spirit. Quite okay. But the Holy Ghost is a person. Emotion. He talks. And you can talk back to him. He reasons. He speaks. He is a personality. The Holy Spirit is the person of God. He is the Spirit of God. When God breathed the breath of life into man, the vital force that was introduced in man was the Holy Ghost. That was what He breathed. That life, that invisible life that was transplanted came from the Holy Ghost. It was the Holy Ghost who did that job. The Holy Ghost in charge of igniting fire. Okay, you want to see an outbreak of revival. The person in charge of that is the Holy Ghost. You want to see igniting of passion. Igniting of fire. Igniting of, of, of desire for God. The person, you know, when people, people struggle with their Christian life and struggle with, you know, becoming stable in their Christian I know the problem they have. They have not yet received the Holy Ghost. They have a carnal, informed view about Him. They don't know Him by revelation. And there are two ways to carry the Holy Ghost. There's a spirit within and there's a spirit upon. The spirit within is the Holy Ghost implanted in you at new birth. That one is given for you. That one is given for your own you. That one can't on anybody. That spirit within. New birth. You receive that one at new birth. That one is given to help you. It's given for yourself. It can't do anything for anybody. So when you give your life and you receive the Holy Ghost, you have not yet gotten the complete outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because what you received is a spirit within. There's also the spirit upon That one is the one a lot of believers lack. And that's the one I want to majorly introduce to you. When Jesus died and went back to be with the Father, before he left, he appeared to the disciples in the um, room where they were hiding. They were scared, afraid. And all of a sudden, Jesus appeared in that room. And they were all afraid. They were doubting. Thomas was doubting. After speaking with them and convincing them that he was the one, he did a very simple exercise. He breathed on them the Holy Spirit. Because up to the time Jesus was resurrected from the dead, the Holy Ghost was not yet. The disciples or the apostles, yes, Jesus' disciples didn't have the Holy Ghost in their lives. So this time, Jesus knew something was missing. And he had to introduce this into their life. So what did he do? He breathed on them the Holy Ghost. He said, receive you the Holy Spirit. After he had done that, there was another major thing he did. He gave them an instruction. Now if I ask you, how many of you have the Holy Ghost? You put up your hands. Why? Because you speak in tongues. You, you know. You feel God's presence when we worship. Okay. But you can have that one and still struggle. 
You can have that one and still be in all kinds of mess. You can have that one and still fail in life. You can have that one and not make exploit in life. It's a gift. God gave it to you freely at New Birth. It's a gift. The second one is not a gift, it's a price. Is a price. That's the one when you carry. Kayabokosh. <laughs> yeah. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Let me show you that second one. Let's study from verse 4. From verse 4. While he was together with them, Jesus was together with the apostles, the disciples, he commanded them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait for the Father's promise. Can you use the Holy Ghost? It's called the promise. This, he said, is what you heard from me. Yes, verse 5. For John baptized with water. But you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So there's baptism of water. <laughs> there's baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now let me show you this. Baptism of water is initiation into Christ. Follow this. Baptism by mansion signifies the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. So when you are immersed in water, you are only symbolizing the death of Christ, the burial, and his resurrection. So now, you are a Christian showing those three processes of new birth. Yes, it starts with death. Death to what? To sin. Death to the old life. So when you are put in water, you died. You were buried. When you are brought out of that water, you have resurrected. The same way. It's a symbolism. The same way Christ died, was buried and was resurrected. So baptism by water actually Lies initiation into Christ because what gives you license into Christianity, what makes you born again, is that you accepted the finished work of Christ, his death, his burial, and resurrection. You accepted him on that basis, it's on that basis Christianity is founded. Now, there's another kind of baptism. The John baptized water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So, what is the baptism of the Holy Spirit? The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not initiation into Christ, it is initiation into power. It is initiation into fire. It is initiation into dunamis. It is initiation into crystal. It is initiation into the anointing. Now, the next verse. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, at this time, are you restoring the kingdom to Israel? Continue. Continue. He said to them, It is not for you to know times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. Now see the next verse. Verse 8. He said, But you will receive. Hello? But you will receive power. He did not say, but I will give you power. The 
Because whatever I give to you is a gift. Whatever you receive is a price. So when Jesus bet on the disciples, what he bet on them was a gift of the Holy Spirit. It was a gift within. The Spirit within. But at this level, he was no longer talking about he was not talking about the gift of the Holy Ghost. He was talking about paying a price to carry the attributes of the Holy Spirit. To carry the manifestations of the Holy Ghost. There is a missing link in the church today, which is what I came to restore in these five days. I know of those days when a believer speaks in tongue, another one is a preach the tongue. I know of that days. We lack it in the church today. I know of the days when a believer is sick. When somebody is sick, you don't need pastor to come and lay hands because somebody carries power. He lays hands. I'm going to show you how it functions. See this. It's a but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be, you will be, you will be my witness. What does it mean to witness? You know, people who witness cannot live in weakness. You need to understand this. A lot of believers who are cold, they are so calm, they are so calm, they are so asleep, they are so afraid, are not true witnesses of Christ. Weakness, weakness. You shall be my witness. It is you shall be a witness. My witness. You know, T.L. Osborne is a witness. Why? You see Benny Hinn, he's a witness. You know, those people, check them. You can't see flies perching on their life. You can't see flies perching on the life of Rehad Bonke. You can't see flies on the head of Billy Graham, or Yonebo, and the rest of them. Why? How possible is it? This man, you know what power is? Fire. You know what fire is? It's so hot that flies, if you try to perch on a hot stove, it burns. The Holy Ghost at this time is called the Spirit of Burning. He burns away chaffs. He burns away infirmities and impurities that stops people from achieving destiny. It burns. I've not seen a man full of this Holy Ghost who is lazy, who is a complainer. I've not seen a man full of the Holy Ghost who does not produce results. I've not seen a man full of the Holy Ghost who is a normal man around people. It's not possible. It's not possible. He said, you will receive. It is said, I will give you power. It means to receive power. There's a price to be paid. To be given power, you just need to give your life to Christ. It's a gift. Just give your life to Christ. Accept. And he just gives it. Because the seal of your Christianity is the Holy Ghost. When you give your life to Jesus, the way Jesus marks you is to put the Holy Ghost in you. That is your emblem of salvation. You hear what I'm saying? The way God identifies, this one is my son. This one is my child. He's a child of God. Is to put the Holy Ghost in you. So that's the seal that this one is a Christian. If you don't have that seal, you cannot be rapturable. Where rapture takes place, the way people would ascend or be caught up with Christ in the sky is that that seal is found in them. That is why the Bible says, having this seal, let those that name the name of the Lord depart from evil. Seal is the seal, the mark of your Christianity. That one is in you, but there's a one upon The Holy Ghost upon is not the seal of your Christian identity. The Holy Ghost upon <laughs> is given for results. Witness, 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 witness. Christianity without power is like car without battery. It's like car without engine. Have you seen a very fine car? Clean neatly washed very powerful looking good but put ignition on it doesn't start you know why the engine room the engine because that's where power is that's where power no matter how house you're fine your house no matter how fine your house is when that house doesn't have power 
<laughs> no matter how far your kitchen is, no matter the food stuff you have in your kitchen, if that kitchen doesn't have a stove, if it doesn't have a gas cooker, no, way. no matter how, no matter how, no matter how, no matter how, you see, no matter how fine these speakers are now, built, very beautiful, foreign speakers, whatever you call it, good microphone, take power out. Take power out. So the life of Christians are like fun. Like the fun. You see, the Bible says, Jesus said to, uh, yeah, book of Revelation, when Jesus was talking to the churches, he said, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. He said, I will spool you out from my mouth. God doesn't use cold people. He uses people who have fire and power on their life. Now, you see, there are people who blow cold in church. There are some who blow hot. When power is on your life, you blow hot. That fan is in motion. It's solving a problem. Now, what is power? Power is a transference of what? Energy. Energy is the ability to do what? Work. So without power, there can't be energy. So the power of the Holy Ghost energizes. For what purpose? For witness. To do work. What kind of work? Work of healings. Work of witnessing. Work of casting out demons. Work of taking nations. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Now look at what happens. There is power in this fan now. That's why this fan has energy to blow. The moment I disconnect this stuff from the source. Because the source of power is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is a power plant of the believer. You can't drop revelation without Him. The source of revelation, the source of faith, the source of dynamis, the source of the working of miracles is the Holy Ghost. The moment that power plant is turned off, the believer is inactive. That is why the one that enforces the church, the one that empowers the church, is the Holy Ghost. Any church without the person of the Holy Ghost is a dead church. Just like a person is dead without the Spirit, a church without the Holy Ghost is dead. I'm not talking about the church, I'm not talking about the building, I'm talking about the saints. When the believers lack power, society grows in darkness. You see, all will go for elections. They don't go with power. You can't save Kaka, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't save the world out there by intellect. No human being can change a human being. It's not possible. A human being can't change a human being. You need power. It's the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is called the spirit of conviction. The one who convicts people. The one who spares people's inner most spirit. The one who changes Holy Ghost. It's not. So you think you can talk too much? Human wisdom. Apostle Paul said, "You know I didn't come to you with the enticing wisdom of men, but I came to you with the full demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power." He was not taking nations because he was a doctor. He was not healing the sick because he was a PhD holder. He was not raising the dead because he had PhD or double doctor degree. It was because power. That's why he cried that prayer all the time and said, Lord God, that I may know you and the power behind your resurrection. The power behind the resurrection of Christ is the Holy Ghost. He was talking about the power of the resurrection. He was not talking about physical power. The power of resurrection is the Holy Ghost. The one who brought Lazarus back to life was the Holy Ghost. The one who brought Jesus back to life was the Holy Ghost. When Peter prayed and the cast came back to life, it was the Holy Ghost. The power of resurrection, the Holy Ghost. That's why the power of revival. What is revival? Revival is the resurrection of spiritual gifts. Revival is the resurrection of dead gifts of the spirit. Where resurrection comes, ever comes. Kayaya. Somebody's going to receive this morning. I said, this is five days. You're going to have transfiguration. 
overwhelming counter this mount on this one. You know why believers are sounding Sounding containers they, they make too much of noise No news You know like Milo Khan That is empty of content When you hit it it makes too much of sound But no news it's noise but no news You know why we think we have the Holy Ghost But it's Holy Ghost within There's Holy Ghost upon it Holy Ghost upon it is the one you receive You can't receive him until you pay the price for him For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.